Your Word for Today with Pastor Billy Burke. Welcome to the broadcast today, Your Word for Today. I mean to tell you, each and every week, I really, I really pray that whatever word does come in your way, I mean, I just pray that you just receive it. What's the Bible say in James chapter 1? Receive the engrafted word that's able to save your soul. It's able to save your mind and save your emotions and not let you be led away, led astray by everything that comes across your radar. God's keeping you. And I'm, I'm believing He's keeping you to heal you. He's keeping you to deliver you. He's keeping you to prosper you. Sometimes we just have to be kept for a season to kind of get you know, to get sane in the Holy Ghost, to get really grounded, rooted, grounded, and then that healing takes place. Then that deliverance takes place. Then God's able to trust you, to prosper you. So we're, we're believing for all of that just for you. But let's read this verse today. It says in verse number five, that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. And then when we jump over to verse 7, it says, But if we walk in the light as He is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus, His Son, cleanses us from all sin. God's wanting us to be more transparent with ourselves and with Him. Not that we share everything going on in our life. We know that's not responsible, that some things don't need to fall on the ears and eyes of every person out there. But there's got to be a greater level of communication. You know, God saved us so that He could commune with us. You know, He saved us so that we could really get in some kind of vertical connection where we would share our heart and our thoughts, our fears and our concerns. That once we bring anything this down in here, see when you go down in here, it's where most people keep a lot of stuff that never gets out. It creates sickness. It creates wrong thinking. It builds walls. It isolates. And that, that is a troublesome thing today. That so many people are living one life in the public and in this private zone. It's a dead zone. Because that stuff down inside of there needs to come out. It needs to come out into the light. Until something gets into the light, God can't really help you to the extent that He wants to. Of course He can help you, but to the full extent of grace. Grace works good. Yeah, it can work in the dark, but it prefers to work with honesty. You know, with upfront truism. He really wants you to be open with Him more than you've ever been open with anybody about a fear, a concern, a problem. You know, something deep dark, deep, deep, dark secret that you've been keeping for years and years and years that not that many people know, if anybody. You've moved from here to there. Maybe you've changed names, you've changed jobs, you've changed careers. And there's a lot of jaded past living on the inside of you. You know, getting forgiven of something is one thing. Getting healed of that is altogether different. You can be forgiven and not healed. I'm going to say that again. You can be forgiven of all that stuff in there, but yet it, it defines you. God don't want a mistake to define you. He don't want something you did many, many years ago, you know, to be the label that you wear, to be stereotyped, you know, to be pigeonholed. You know, when God forgives you, He releases it, but more than that, He wants to replace what was once there with the blueprint for your destiny. But you're going to have to get, you're going to have to come out in the open a little bit more. And that's, this is the reason why so many people's personality never changes. Their name's in the Lamb's book. Yeah, we get it. But who they are never changes. There's no conforming into His image. There's no real change in who they are. And if you didn't know that they had gone through the cleansing stream, if you didn't know that they had given their life to the Lord, you would really question, have they... Has, has anything, they're still being defined by pain, by rejection. I mean, can God heal rejection? Well, I hope so. I mean, that's what we preach. We preach Calvary covers everything. We believe that. Then we have to demonstrate that. 
We can't demonstrate that in sheer willpower. There has to be a touch from heaven hit you. There has to be a connection between you and a holy God where it, it's real. It's not just going to church and singing out of a book and hugging everybody and being the same. Who wants to be the same? But for God to do with what you want him to do or what you say you would like, how can you restore a broken vase until you have all the pieces of the vase? How do you restore a car until you have all the pieces put in one place to fix that car? And so often we want God to restore everything, but we don't want to give him all the pieces because the pieces are so painful or we're embarrassed that we used to be that way or that we did those things, or some of that back there was our fault. And sometimes we just would rather deny it, forget about it, I plead the blood, it's under the blood. Well, there's some things under the blood that aren't really under the blood because the blood, the blood deals with truth. You know, I mean, love without truth isn't real love. Joy without peace isn't real joy. God wants you to have the package you know, of, of the fruit of the Spirit. He wants, you to, he wants you to experience all of these things, but for him to do that, he has to get in there and touch you in the deep places. What Psalm 51 is beautiful. It says what? He desires truth on the inward part. Look at that. He desires truth on, what's the inward part? That deep down into your soul. He wants to know every rhyme and reason why you're, what you're dealing with. He wants the light to hit it. Why do surgeons use all these spotlights when they're operating? Because they have to shine the light into dark places so they don't cut a wrong artery, so they don't remove a wrong organ. They want to make sure they're removing, but that light has to be high powered. Why do, why do we need lights to land the plane at nighttime? And why do we have motion detector lights around our house that come on when somebody, light, 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 it shines what? It releases a ray into the darkness. It exposes things that are in dark places. And God doesn't want you to have anything in here that's been kept from his forgiveness, kept from his grace, kept from him touching you. So many people today, pride is a big issue that keeps people from getting healed. Pride is a big people, thing that keeps people from answering a word of knowledge. Why would God say there's somebody here being healed of such and so forth if that person out there, that's them, but they don't want to bring that into the light? They would rather keep, you know, the code of honor in front of people, keep their dignity, so to speak, and remain the way they are. Well, can't they go home and get, take that and get healed at home? I would never make God seem like he can't do that. But when God calls you in public to be healed, he wants to heal you in public. That's what the scriptures teach. It's his will and his way. He's Lord of both. And if he wants you to be healed in the church, that's where you better get it. Or in the public, uh, in the marketplace, you get it. Or in a home, you get it. In your car, wherever. He's, he will choose. Believe me, he knows how to really locate you, find you out on that branch in the sycamore tree. He can locate you and begin to do his mighty work. It's there he wants you to be in the light. He don't like this light switch that believers have where we just turn it off and turn it on and we choose the environment, we choose the place, and we choose when and where. That doesn't make him Lord, it makes us Lord. And that's why Proverbs 3 is so powerful. It says, commit your way. It's possible to give God your heart, but not your way. I'm going to say that again. It's possible to give God your heart. I give you my heart. God says, thank you. And then we say, but I'm going to do it my way. God says, no, 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 no. I want your heart so I can do it my way. And there is the battle. We want his will, but we want our way. And today's broadcast is about you coming into the light of God's love and his restoration for you. And it's just about surrendering, not just to his will, but to his way. And his way is for you to use confession to bring something up and out of you. Well, who do I bring it to? I don't want to tell everybody my stuff. What well, says right here that God is light in verse number five, you bring it into the light of God. Boom, right there. Bring it into the light of God, First John 1, 5. Bring it, and what do you mean, Lord, I, I bring this to you. 
No one's going to understand this. No one can really hold, handle this. Uh, my church friends could never get a, they couldn't absorb this. They don't understand where I've been. So I bring it to you, and that's fine. But whenever you do that, there's times that God may say, well, I want you to bring it into another light. Well, what light could that be? Well, the Bible says here in Psalm 119, I believe it's Psalm 119, His word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. So you have the light of God, but then you also have the light of God's word. Now you're getting hit with the light of God Himself. Now His word is a lamp unto my feet, and that means you find a way to get into that Bible. Use a concordance. Ask your pastor, get on the internet, ask Siri, whatever you have to do, you know, in that scripture, every answer, every remedy, every cure, you know, for every malady and disease and dysfunction in the world is in the pages of that book. You say, is there a balm in Gilead? You bet there is. There's a balm on this show for you today. There's a balm probably in your church for you today. Well, how's come I'm not receiving it? Because you're not letting, bringing everything to the light. God can only work with what you give Him. How do you give Him something? You bring it up and out with your words. Your words. What, call it a confession. Call it, a, you know, uh, sharing your problem. Whatever you want to call this. But it is when you bring something up and out. And it's into the light. It's into the light of God Himself. And so much of that can be taken care of right then and right there. I mean, on a walking trail, you know, in your backyard, in a patio, on your pool deck, in your car, in your trailer truck, driving over the road. I mean, any one of these places can be a confessional. It can be, man, I, I just shared that with God. And I mean, you can feel like, I mean, a, a King Kong has been lifted off of your body. Because that's what happens. When it comes out into the light, he grabs it. He grabs it and he takes it and he throws it away into the forgetful zone. He never remembers it. And he never speaks of it again. And then he begins his wonderful work of scrubbing you and releasing the washing of the water on the inside of you. Yeah. It's wonderful to be in fellowship with him. It's wonderful to be able to go to the invisible, immortal, only wise God. And you're right, you don't need a priest, you don't need a preacher. I get it, you don't, no, but, it, but, but you, do need, you do need to bring things into the light. You can't say, I don't need church, I don't need a priest, I don't need a pastor, and then keep it all in here. No, that don't work. That's the law of sin and death working on the inside of you. Just like when poison is in you, you've got to get that botulism out of you. You know, that's why your, your organs are made to, to not hold in poison and toxin. That's why you get sick in the stomach. That's why you get sick in different parts of your body. Because you've taken in, you've ingested pesticide or you've ingested a combination that's not fit for your blood type or for you. Until we learn how to properly nourish our bodies, we have to really we have to learn how, learn how to keep that stuff out of us. But as long as you're on this life and before we meet Him and we're living by the grace of God, we've got to really walk in the light. What's that mean? You've got to share it with Him. You've got to go to God's Word and shine that light on my sickness. What's that light say? You're healed. You say, yeah, but I'm already sick. Well, that's a fact that you're sick. It's a fact, but the truth is you're healed. You shine that light of God's Word. You take Psalm 66, it says we're going to the wealthy place. Deuteronomy 8.18 says, you know, I'm going to connect you to the wealth. You know, I, I, uh, Genesis 26 says he sowed seed in the time of the famine and received a hundredfold the self-same year. So in other words, I, I, I have this lack of money. I have this physical condition. I have this troubled soul. Well, Psalm 23 says, He restores my soul. So the reason you shine that light, you, the, the word of the Lord is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. So there's God's light, there's the word of God that's light, and it, it shines on the inside of you, and it hits your brain waves, it hits your organs. 
That's why it says, Solomon said, if you'll hide that word in your heart, it'll bring health to your flesh. Because there's a light in it. It's the light of God's word just shining all through you. Hitting cancer zones, hitting diabetes. Many being healed right now, many being touched right now with cancer. There's symptoms leaving your body. Oh man, there's vertigo's leaving, dizzy's leaving, visions are clearing up, vision. Tumors are falling off. There's a lot of miracles going on right now with this cancer. The light of the, of the Holy Spirit shining all through people. So we have God as light, we have His Word as light. Look at number three. It says, confess your sins one to another and pray that you may be healed. So now we're moving into a different dimension. First is God's light, then is God's Word, but now God is saying sometimes you've got to bring what's going on on the inside of you in the light of other people. Now that's the hard one because now it's exposed. It's no longer just you and you know what happened. It's no longer just you and you know what happened in God's Word. Those are pretty safe. You still got to do it, but it's pretty safe because nobody with skin on those. Family, friends, people at church, wherever, at work, at school. But now when you get to the third level here, sometimes God just requires that. Why, why does He do that? Because He knows that a lot of what's going on in your life, if other people knew about that, it'd be very, it could motivate you to change. I mean, who wants anybody to see their dirty laundry? Who wants anybody to see that you're like this because of improper diet, improper words speaking out of your mouth, improper relationships? These are all things that, well, I mean, they're embarrassing. But how desperate can you, how desperate do you have to get before you really want to be well? You can't just expect you to, everywhere you go, to be the right place and it just happens. If you're doing that and it hasn't happened, it's because God is expecting more from you. He's wanting to bring, for you to bring some stuff out into the open. He's light. If you can't trust God, who are you going to trust? If you can't call on Him and say, Lord, I, you know, like, uh, who was it? Uh, Saul pl- cried out to God and said, I played the fool. David says, search me, Lord, if there's anything wicked in me. These were men that were praying to the invisible God. They weren't reading anything. They weren't in a church or a service. They were crying out to an invisible God, not a statue, not a rock, not a crystal, to the invisible God. Not a bunch of candles lit, no, to the invisible God. Nothing tangible. When Saul cried out, when David cried out, when Saul of Tarsus cried out, Lord, is that you? There was nothing there. Hollywood makes something be there. God, in the scriptures, there was nothing there but, but the thin air of invisibility. There was faith there. You heard a voice, an audible voice. And so here we have it. God is light. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet. Confess your faults. The word fault there in the Greek means your weakness or whatever you're, whatever you're facing at the time that is, that is something you're dealing with that you just can't seem to get away from. And if you don't do this one and you don't do this one, maybe just number three is the one. If you don't do, you know, maybe that's the one that's going to work for you. They all work. It's which one do you choose to work? You work it, it works for you. And once you then confess that, uh, what happens? The same Holy Spirit in all of these. God is light, scriptures are light. Confess your faults one to another and, and you're healed. It's all, the, it's all the Holy Spirit that's moving into you, bringing healing, restoration, peace, re- a release. Again, by like getting that, that whole heaviness lifted off of you. So you can function. So you can be a, a good mother, a you know, mother fulfilling duties, and a good student. So you can continue to do your chores at the church and not be sidelined. Because there's something here that's never been allowed to come out of you. 
I know what I'm talking about with this. It's just so many people carry stuff and they get accepted at church. They get accepted by somebody. Somebody loves them and then they neglect all of this broken pieces of glass on the inside of them. Did you ever walk on pieces of broken glass? That's what it's like for some people on the inside. And that's why all of the people, sometimes even Christians, taking so many sleep aids just to go to sleep, they can't lay down. It's not just because their mind is racing, it's because there's something that hasn't been taken care of. Paul said, don't let the sun go down on your anger. Don't let that sun go down. Every time that sun goes down, you open the door for a spirit. That's what he said, don't give the devil any place. One of the few places in scripture that are very clear how the devil gets into people's lives. So what do you say, which one here? God is light, his word is a lamp under my feet. Confess your faults one to another, pray that you may be healed. Sometimes my dear partner, my dear friend, sometimes it's all of these. Oh, I like that one there. Sometimes, you know, it, it takes that synergy. Synergy is the same principle coming in different directions to the intersection to break the yoke. Sometimes that's what it takes. You can bring it up here before the invisible God and, you know, Lord, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, and it still doesn't break it. It's just, it's, you need to find out where your faith level is, and not only that, find out which avenue God's going to bless. I'm after the blessing. Aren't you after the blessing? I don't want any car, I want the blessed car. I don't want any job, I want the blessed job. I don't want to buy any house, I want the house that's blessed. I don't want to have to call in favor, I want it to be there. And sometimes that's a little bit extra preparatory work. God's speaking to many of you today. That number's at the bottom of the screen. Please call. Someone's waiting to pray with you today. Someone's waiting to say yes to the Master for you today. But back to this, it may take going to Him. It may take shining that light of that Word into you. And it may take even divulging some information classified very carefully to some people that you trust. And when you get all three of those working, I'm telling you what, it's only a matter of time. And that yoke is going to break. Healing is going to flow through you. And you're going to say, you know what? Wow, what did I learn here? You learned that God is light. And in him is no darkness. You learned that his word is a lamp under your feet and a light under your path. And you learned that each believer carries a portion of light, all of these is which has the power to reveal, expose, and then heal. I'm praying for you today that you get your revelation on the light of God that's shining on the inside of you right now. Lord, I pray that you'd cause a yielding and a surrender as we let the light shine in each. Oh God, that you would expose anything hidden and dark. Let it be pulled up by the roots that you would occupy, possess, inhabit, dwell. Oh, we want to dwell in that secret place of the Most High. Touch our viewers, touch our partners today. Let there be a cleansing, a, a streamline of cleansing take place, I pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Man, call that number. Someone's waiting to pray for you. We had the pump. You have it. Where's it put? It's on my side. Come over here. How long have you had this? 14 years. 14 years. I'm 20. You're 20. So you had this when you were six. Yes. What's the matter with you? I'm type one diabetic. And, and that's the pain. It's, uh, a, it's a pump. It's an insulin pump. Yes. It's not a pain pump. It's for medication. Uh huh. You're shaking. Why? You feel him. Yes. Do you know who that is? God. It's the Holy Spirit. Yes. I know he can heal me. He is. It's happening as you stand here. <laughs> does, this, does this instrument record your numbers? Mm -hmm. Do you know what they were before you came up? 370. What are they now? I'm, I have my kit over here. Go get it. What are you doing here? You're gonna do, what are you going to do? Check my blood sugar. Right in front of me? Yes, sir. You're not going to do needles or nothing like that, are you? Here, here. <laughs> Do 
Help me, Jesus. <laughs> 83. <laughs> Is that some miracle or what? I mean, she tested herself. She stuck herself with that little needle right in the service. I don't like needles. And I was standing there as that was taking place. And for her to come back and say those numbers have dropped, I'm sure they were just dropped right down to the regular normal zone. Right in front of a couple thousand people, God did that. Touch that girl. We just continue to pray that her healing is perfected and refined as we pray for you. But take a moment today. Take a moment today. Refresh your, you know, refresh, put your eyes on the promises. Read Isaiah 53 and Matthew 8, 17. Read the 91st Psalm. Don't go a day without getting that written word just percolating all through your system. There's no substitute for it. There's no current event that can match what ancient men said, ancient prophets moved on by the Holy Ghost through time. Mm. There's no replacement for what he himself has said. In this hour we're living, I, we still need, we still need the gospels, we still need the prophets, we still need the patriarchs, we still need them all. We need a Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and David, and Solomon, and Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, we need them all. And most of all, we need J-E-S-U-S, -S, Jesus the Christ. He's on your side, he really is. You can talk to him, you can bear your soul to him. When you bring that into the light, something kills it right there. I'm telling you that, practice that today. Hope to see you again real soon, maybe in a meeting back here on the internet. For sure here next Sunday night on Your Word for Today. We'll see you. God bless you. The word cleanse is a familiar term used to promote better health. The Bible speaks of another kind of cleanse that deals with the inner man. Allow God to cleanse you and remove the damage of the past to begin a journey that leads to a life of wholeness and blessing with God. Soul Cleanse, The Journey to Wholeness, a two-part teaching by Pastor Billy Burke, available in CD or MP3 formats. We are here on assignment. Come on, we're going to take the city. That revival's coming to Orlando. I had COVID in December. You had COVID? Yes. Uh -huh. And it took about seven to ten days for me to get, to get over it. They're crazy. Yeah. I began to breathe deeper and Tonight. deeper, and I could feel oh, the Holy Spirit. Shout for us!